Joined now by Kevin Klein. He is the director of Colorado's Division of uh, Homeland Security and Emergency Management at the office, masked up, ready to go. Thanks for your time. Hey, Kyle. Thanks for having me. It's good talking with you again. At one point, Colorado was saying that we wanted to have a COVID-19 testing location in each of our 64 counties before reopening. Uh, the governor decided to go ahead and start that phased reopening without a testing center in each county. Was that because you guys decided it wasn't needed or wasn't possible? I, I think that we're, we're constrained in our resources. So I, I don't think 64 counties was possible, uh, but we do have 42 uh, sites across the state. Uh, we've been sending PPE to them and uh, we're in partnerships with additional folks like uh, Kroger and uh, Kaiser Permanente uh, adding testing capacity. Uh, we have community testing in Pueblo, Mesa County, um, and uh, we've got local public health agencies that are operating theirs. So I, I think that the number of sites, um, although we'd always like to have more, I think the number of sites are what we need to make sure that we're meeting the testing demand with the supplies that we have available. Uh, and the governor's uh, desire to make sure that we uh, get back to some sort of new normal as we start loosening up on some restrictions. Do you think, uh, is it even practical that some of the smaller population counties, more remote counties, you know, like Hinsdale or Lake or something like that, is going to have a testing site in the end? Or would you be better off putting those resources in an adjacent county where you could process more people? I think what we want to do is have partnerships where we scale up our testing and we're targeted in testing because part of what we want to do with our testing efforts is a preventative measure. And one of the things that, you know, you'll, you'll see us doing and what we have been doing is targeting things like skilled nursing facilities uh, to go in and test some asymptomatic uh, employees and residents and actually identify outbreaks before they become giant outbreaks. So that's one of the things that you see with our testing group. Uh, we've presented a testing plan to the feds, uh, and the feedback was excellent. The governor was on the call. Uh, we had representatives from the White House, the CDC, and FEMA, uh, HHS, all on this uh, call about scaling up our testing. And we've got a pretty detailed plan to, to scale up testing efforts across the state. And like I said earlier, that is targeted, right? So we want to make sure that we're, we're doing prevention, we're doing, uh, in the end, suppressing the disease through those efforts um, by identifying uh, people that, that have COVID uh, and getting them isolated from uh, the rest of the population. The, the testing efforts, as we get supplies in, we're moving them out. And that is one of the things that, We've been clear, and the governor's been clear with our federal partners that uh, getting those supplies out to the states and to Colorado is, is critical. Um, and we're, you know, hoping to ramp up to about 8,000 tests a day is kind of what we're shooting for um, for near term, and then hopefully be able to sustain um, um, closer to 10,000 tests a day. The governor has raised some issues about um, dealing with purchasing issues, felt that the feds undercut us on one deal. Has that been smoothed over? Do you feel like that's going better? Kyle, I think we still have challenges in, in purchasing, um, both for testing supplies and PPE. I think that some of the things the feds have done have helped, um, you know, recently. Uh, we've got feds pushing out uh, PPE to uh, skilled nursing facilities direct, um, and we've we still have a completely disrupted market and a completely disrupted supply chain. Uh, but some of the things that they've done with the air bridge, I think, have helped. The other thing that I know that we've uh, talked about with the, our federal partners is more transparency in what we can expect to get. And the governor's been very active in, in making sure that, you know, not only are we looking for um, supplies 
uh, through our innovation uh, response team, but we're also pushing on our federal partners to uh, to get those. Uh, we've got some suppliers. We're getting in a lot of surgical masks. We're getting in some more gloves. We're starting to get that that maneuvered out, uh, but it still takes. Uh, you know, it's still waiting for the supply chain to uh, to catch up. It's um, it's been a challenge just because of the of how disruptive the, the supply chain has been. I, I think that's one thing that we've been trying to to talk through with people in the community because it seems like a lot of times the goalposts and the goals are, are shifting all over the place. We want to do this and we want to do this. It, it, it sounds like you guys don't always know what you can count on and you can hope to do 10,000 tests tomorrow, but if you can't do them, you can't do them. Right. How, what kind of a challenge is that like from where you sit trying to do emergency management and planning when you don't know what resources you'll have? It's it's a big challenge, and that is one of the things that we emphasize is our need to get that information in order to better operationalize what we're doing. So what we're, we're constantly balancing are the available resources against the, the demand, uh, and that demand we prioritize. So things that we try to prioritize – Right now, our outbreaks, we're trying to prioritize skilled nursing facilities, make sure that, you know, the places where we have our most vulnerable, uh, we're protecting them. Um, and then our priority lists go down from there. So we will be matching available resources against a list of priorities that we, we come up with. Um, we'd like to give everybody everything uh, that they've asked for, but since we don't have enough, uh, we end up prioritizing uh, the request and then filling them according to the priorities. One thing that your office also does is to keep an eye on things like uh, the strength and safety of the power supply and the water supply and the food supply and things like that. I remember when people were panic buying water in the stores, and I was thinking to myself, if we lose our water supply, holy cow, people have no idea what we're in for. Is there any reason for Coloradans to be concerned about our power, water, or food supply? Uh, not at this time, Carl. We're, um, we are watching uh, the critical infrastructure sectors. We have our, our critical infrastructure section within our, our fusion center monitoring uh, our critical infrastructure partners, uh, asking them what their, you know, how their workforce is doing, and keeping an eye on that, so we get a report on that every day. And so far, it's been it's been pretty tight. Now you know um, about some of the challenges with some of the agricultural producers, uh, particularly meatpacking. Uh, we've been watching that, you know, watching that carefully, and working with the uh, the companies um, that are involved. Uh, but so far, um, that is the one sector that we've been most concerned with, uh, but that is still functioning at this time. Can I, can I ask you about the meatpacking plants? What is it about the meatpacking plants, the way they're run and so forth, that has led to such outbreaks there? And what can other large employers learn from what's happened there? Uh, Kyle, I think that's a question for our epidemiologists. I, you know, I don't know what, you know, what it is about them, I, I'm sure it has to deal with the proximity uh, and the type of work that they're doing, but, you know, I, I don't know really why that is. That's fair. Um, so I think this is what, day 60 for your emergency operations center, is that correct? I think it says day 60? Yes. What are you telling your own people to expect in terms of a duration? How long do you expect to be at the footing that you're at now? Uh, Kyle, that's a great question. We are uh, starting to look at how we demobilize a little bit. Um, it, it's been a, a, long, um, a long 60 days. It's been a lot of work. Uh, we have a super team, uh, and, and we're taking a whole-of-government approach. So it's not just my office, but it's folks that we bring in from across state government uh, that operate in our state emergency operations uh, center, uh, and it is the assistance that we're getting from the bigger team that helps us keep going. Uh, 
we have to start thinking about how we transition from our emergency operations into a more sustained operation. And I think those discussions are going on now. How do we how do we do that? What type of infrastructure do we need to build in order to, um, you know, for a long term, as long as this um, virus is with us, how do we set up systems that will address them? So we're we're out of the emergency phase and into some sort of sustainment phase. And as things ramp up, you know, if we start getting peaks, we can turn up emergency operations more. Uh, but it, we are going to need to develop long-term uh, sustained efforts to address this. And it is going to be a, a whole government approach. Uh, it is going to take everything from uh, our Office of Economic Development and International Trade, Labor and Employment, Local Affairs, all the different state agencies that come together will have some sort of role in that longer term sustained response to this virus. And that's where we will transition to next after we get through this emergency phase. Are you guys in a position now where you can simultaneously deal with this and the severe weather that's coming and the potential for increased wildfire danger? Uh, today's a good day to ask that question because we actually had a, um, an exercise uh, using our, our backup uh, State Emergency Operations Center in order to see if we could uh, get the people together and run a separate incident at the same time. So we ran that one as, a, as an exercise while we're running the, this COVID response in, in real time. So uh, we tested that today. Um, I haven't got the after action report, but I haven't heard anything uh, that went wrong there. And I think it's important to just remind everybody that we run multiple incidents um, on, a, on a regular basis. We'll have many, many fires burning. We will have a flood and a hazmat leak going on at the same time. So you know, we, we practice for that. And, and today is a good example where we actually ran an exercise running a separate uh, backup emergency operations center uh, to handle that completely um, separately from the incident that we're running right now. What did you guys uh, do an exercise on? What was it? It's a wildfire. Gotcha. Um, last question for you. Um, you. Get a lot of feedback from the community. I, I'm sure that the state does well about how decisions are made, how decisions are communicated. What we typically hear from folks is when an elected official makes a decision, they say, how dare they? We should have the subject matter experts do it. And when a subject matter expert makes a, a decision, they say, how dare they? It should be an elected official that we can vote out of office. You have a, a front, front row view to some of these decision-making deliberations that most Coloradans don't. What do you think people would better understand if they were in the room? Uh, I think they'd be proud of their government. I think they, they'd understand uh, just what a big effort it is and just how contemplative we are about doing the right thing, making sure that we've got good public policy in place. And then I, I think that they see the governor's leadership um, all, all in. Yeah, and that is one thing that really shows in how we're, we're operationalizing this is that um, we are looking at data uh, from the epidemiologists where we have updates, we have metrics uh, that we measure, uh, we have uh, public policy discussions, uh, and there are multiple discussions uh, every day, um, you know, from the beginning of the day, and we close out the day with a, a call with the governor. Uh, to brief what happened today and to get plans for tomorrow. Uh, so I, I think Colorado would be really proud of their of their government. How would you like to be the emergency management director in a state that's opening up completely right now? Uh, you know, I think it's, it depends on what the circumstances on the ground are. I think that that's, you know, each state uh, needs to make their own determination. Um, you know, I don't, I, clearly that's not, appropriate for Colorado right now, um, but at some point we're going to have to keep adjusting our restrictions based on 
Um, what we see um, as far as case counts and prevalence of the of the virus in our community. So, you know, we'll we'll do what works for Colorado and let those other states do what works for them. But um, I think we're doing what's right uh, for us right now. You've been generous with your time. You're a busy guy. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, all the best in your work.